Do you remember the first day you started using Flutterflow, excited to disrupt the business world with your revolutionary dating app that helps goat herders find love? You click that magic button, enable push notifications, and like magic, everything just worked first try and you moved on, never to think about it again? If so, I hate you. But if not, this video's for you. I've spent more time than I'm willing to admit on this topic, and I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Most app users come to expect certain standards with notifications, and Flutterflow have been vague about common concepts like notification histories and deep linking, dynamic linking, iOS specific configurations, and just the common problems that a lot of us have faced, you know, like missing device tokens and broken cloud functions. The Firebase versus Supabase thing also comes into play here, and it's been confusing for me, and I've been a software engineer for many years, so I can't imagine the pains that you would face if you're not a coder or you're just new to all of this. Now, I am going to focus on Firebase cloud messaging here. This might be less useful to you if you're using other service providers like OneSignal, but the reason that I use Firebase cloud messaging is mostly because Firebase is so baked into Flutterflow, and there are some things that really do just work like magic if you stick with FCM. Plus, it stays free even if you scale to like a billion users, which is cool. If you're finding it won't work, often it's just about knowing where to look and even just knowing the right buttons to click and in what order you need to click them. But if you move away from Firebase, you're probably going to have to mess with custom code and you're probably going to spend significant time figuring it out just to get the same functionality. Recently, I was encountering a few of these issues when I was trying to make development environment for one of my projects. So I'm going to do this again here. I'm going to make this push example development environment. So from a backend perspective, this is a totally clean environment and I need to just create a new Firebase project. So I've done that here and I've created the push notifications example project. There's a couple of things that I want to point out right off the bat here. For one thing, if you go into project settings in Firebase, you're going to see there are no apps in a new project, of course. Now, not too long ago, Flutterflow actually forced you to create these apps yourself and set up the configurations for them, which is actually a little bit cumbersome. But these apps are really, really important, and especially for push notifications to work. But in general, if you want to build a mobile app, you must have these applications created. There's one for iOS, one for Android, and one for the web as well. Now, actually, Flutterflow is going to create these for us if we do the configurations for Firebase in the right order. With the way things are set up with Flutterflow, Firebase authentication actually does make a big difference here, and so does Firestore. So first, we'll go ahead and get started with Firebase Authentication. And we'll also set up a Firestore database. Once you've done these two things, you can go back to Flutterflow, and it will take care of a lot of the rest of the heavy lifting. With my new environment, I now have five errors, so I just need to go through these sequentially, and it's a good idea to try to do them in the right order. First, I just need to give a value for the base URL for my API. And now I'll go to Firebase and start setting things up. I'll actually do this with the wizard just to be complete about it. What I want to do with my development environment is keep the same bundle ID. And it is possible to do this, so now I can use the same deployment for test flight or for Android, but have a development environment behind it with a different Firebase project. You just need to be careful about versioning, but I tend to find that this is much easier than creating two completely separate apps for the same Flutterflow project. So I'll go to set up Firebase, paste in my Firebase ID, and we'll have authentication and the user connection. Those are important to have turned on. The first problem when I try to do this is that Flutterflow doesn't have access to that Firebase account, so we need to add it. And I do this in users and permissions in Firebase, and I'll add Flutterflow in here as an editor. Okay, great. Now we'll try that again. Good. Next step. Next is going to be Firebase indexes. Let's see if it works. We already have a not deployed error. Let's try push notifications. Spoiler alert, it's going to fail as well. This time it's the Blaze plan error. You might know this one already. To have any cloud functions at all running in your Flutterflow project, you need to be on the Blaze plan. So we'll just head over to the Firebase console and go from Spark to Blaze. A lot of this stuff is in the Flutterflow documentation, and it can just be a case of reading through it. So also, it's important to use that as a resource too. So let's go again with push notifications. OK, so once again, that didn't deploy, and now there's a new error. But this time, it's just unknown error. Please contact support at Flutterflow. I really hate this error. And honestly, I think that there's been a bit of a disservice in the way that this flow is set up, because it's just not linear. The reason these things are happening in this case is actually because we have to go back and set up more of Firebase. 
So having a Firebase setup wizard behave in this way is really unintuitive. Anyway, not to be discouraged, we'll go to start building and then we'll go to Firebase. The first thing we're going to do is actually generate the configuration files. The notifications aren't going to even think about working until we've at least done this step. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do is go to Firestore and start setting that up. And one of the reasons for this is because the user's collection is intimately tied to push notifications. So you can send a push to a particular user based on their ID. This is also really important because the FCM tokens, which come from the user's device, get stored in Firestore as a sub collection under the user's record. So I can just go through and deploy each of these indexes, user reference deletions, and Firestore rules. Okay, nice. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's see what other errors there are. This one is just about my own private cloud functions. I just need to hit deploy on those. And then the other one is for push notifications itself. Now, before I deploy this, there's a few other things that I want to show you in Google. For one thing, when I hit generate config files, it created these three applications, and these are really important. If I wanted to create a web app, for example, I could use this string in my JavaScript application, and then the Firebase SDK would allow me to use this with my web app. We also have mobile apps though. Flutterflow has created this iOS app and this Android app. Now, for Android, you might need to add things like the SHA certificate fingerprints. This is to do with sign in with Google and other services like that. But in iOS, for push notifications to work, there's something that we have to do here. And this is in the documentation, but it's an easy step to forget about. If you're having problems, you've got to make sure to remember to do this step. You go to Cloud Messaging in Project Settings, and you'll see your iOS app here. You need to add the APNS key, which is a file that you get from your Apple developer account. This is all in the documentation, but it's really important that you do this step or your push notifications are not going to work on iPhone. Okay, now let's head over to GCP, the Google Cloud Platform. What you want to do is you want to search for Cloud Run Functions. These are actually just Firebase functions. That's what they really are, is Cloud Run Functions. When we initially tried to deploy the push notifications with the Flutterflow console, it actually did successfully create two of them. There's actually supposed to be three, but we'll figure out why the third one didn't get created in a second. The important thing to note here is that these need to exist. The first one adds the FCM token, the Firebase Cloud Messaging token. And anytime you see FCM, you know it's to do with push notifications. The other one is on user deleted. So that's just the cascade from Firebase Auth where it will delete the user record in Firestore if the Firebase Auth user has been deleted. Now, even I, after doing this for a long time, I'm still unsure of the order that I'm supposed to do these things. But actually, I'm a bit surprised that these functions even were created. I don't think this even happened the last time I tried these exact steps. Thing is, we have not deployed push notifications in the push notifications screen. So that's good. We'll just hit deploy and we'll see if the rest of the functions get created. Fantastic, we're making some progress now. We've deployed the push notifications successfully. Let's see if this has added anything in Google Cloud Platform. It has indeed. Now we have this new one, send push notifications trigger. There's an action in Flutterflow that lets you send a push notification, and this is the function that it is invoking when you use it. And like I said, I've done this before and it's not added these functions. I don't know why sometimes it does things in the order that it does. Sometimes, honestly, you just have to redeploy the cloud functions and it will work. And by the way, I actually went on to support just to understand one thing. This tick is still a button. You can actually click it again and redeploy the push notifications. Sometimes all it takes is just a redeploy of the push notifications, even if they've already been deployed. I guess it's because cloud functions fail or I'm not sure something is going on under the hood with the Flutterflow code. Anyway, at this point, you can deploy your mobile application and see how it goes. Start logging users in. And what will happen is the users will get logged in Firestore. Okay, I'm just going to move over now to a different development environment. This is production for this particular application because I've already done a mobile deploy and I've got some users in the database. What's interesting now is that in the Firestore database, we have this push notifications collection. These are push notifications that get created whenever the user makes one or whenever you manually trigger one. Unfortunately, this actual FF push notifications isn't available in Flutterflow. They've hidden it, which I think is a shame because it probably could have been used for notifications histories. Thing is, if you want user specific notifications in the database, this doesn't allow for that because this just has one record for every push notification sent, even if it was sent to a lot of people. You can see here, target audience is all. So it's just sending that push notification to all of the users. If you want more fine grained control, or if you want to send them to particular users, it gets a bit more complicated. And so I tend to favor doing this myself. 
Now, this part is really important. If you go to the user's record in Firestore, on each user document, you're going to see a sub collection and it's going to be called FCM tokens. Now, this is something that Flutterflow again has created by itself. And what it's doing is it's storing particular tokens that pertain to a user's device. So if, for example, I log in with my iPhone and then I log in again for the same account with my Android phone, both of those different phones have their own device tokens and that gets sent as I log in or as I register. And those tokens are saved here in the database and there's going to be multiple tokens if I have multiple devices. Probably most of your users will have one token. But sometimes tokens change, they have to be invalidated and each of those tokens will show up as a sub collection under each and every user in your database. If you're finding that your push notifications are not working, you must go to Firestore and check that FCM tokens are being logged for your user. In this case, I have my user, but I don't have any FCM tokens. What you need to do is check to see if all of the other things that I'm going to show you in this video are set up properly, and then have the user log out and log in again. This is the action that you need to take to create a new FCM token. Now, if you're still finding that your notifications are not working, here's the next thing that you need to check. You got to go back to GCP again. In this case, we'll go to users and permissions and advanced permission settings. This will take us to GCP again. In this case, it'll take us to I am. Now, Firebase at Flutterflow.io is the editor, but it needs more permissions than this. And sometimes, ideally, these will be set up for you when you set up an application in Flutterflow. Because I set up a different Firebase project, but had already created the original production project, this Firebase at Flutterflow.io user wasn't given the appropriate permissions. So I need to go to Edit Principle, and I need to give him more roles. The first role that I need to give is Cloud Functions Admin. And this enables Firebase at Flutterflow.io to manage all the deployments of the Cloud Functions, and we need lots of these, as I showed you before, for the push notifications to work. The other, as well as editor, that I need is Service Account User. Perfect, and I'll save those. And now Firebase at Flutterflow.io has the privileges that it needs to do what it needs to do for push notifications. At this point, it's worth manually triggering the notifications. I don't find this useful in production, but for testing, it's really useful to see if things are set up well enough that push notifications can be manually triggered. And what this is doing is it's actually using the cloud functions that have been deployed. So if the cloud functions aren't there, this won't work. If that doesn't work, another thing that you can do is send the push notification directly from Firebase. In that case, all I need to do is go to the user record, find an appropriate FCM token, copy it, and then I go to all products and I find Firebase cloud messaging. Go to start a campaign, Firebase notification. I'll just smash in test here. And actually, instead of having to create the whole campaign, if you enter the title and the text, it'll let you send a test message and just smash an FCM token in here. If this isn't working, at least you know that it's not related even to the cloud functions that Flutterflow is setting up. It's related directly to the way that your app is set up with respect to Firestore. Okay, I think that should cover the deployments pretty well. The main things to remember here are to make sure that your Flutterflow push notifications are appearing in Firestore, that your users have FCM tokens associated with them, that you can send notifications using the Flutterflow console, or at least be able to send them using Firebase itself. Now I'm going to dive into the details just a little bit more about what push notifications should actually be able to do. If I go back to cloud run functions again, let's dive in a little bit to the send push notifications trigger function. If you go to the source tab of that cloud function, you can actually make tweaks to the way that Flutterflow have done it. Now, actually, this doesn't even have to be done in JavaScript, and it can actually be done in any language that you want. My preference is Python. So I can actually tweak the way that the push notification is sent. For one thing, I have a little method here that grabs the user tokens for each user. And in this way, I have more fine-grained control over how I can group notifications and send them to particular kinds of users. The other thing that I can do here is to actually change the sound of the push notification coming into iOS, and I can set the badge count there. So if I don't have custom logic, for example, to tell me exactly how many unread notifications a user has, I can just set the badge to one, and then I can add that to the APNS payload for iOS. Android actually works slightly differently in terms of badges, so it does tend to work out of the box, but this is necessary to do for iOS. 
But if you want to do this in JavaScript, you also can. You just need to dive into the Cloud function itself and find the relevant part for the APNS. And then you can add your badge or custom sounds in here inside of the Cloud function. Deep linking is also super important. And again, I prefer to manage my deep linking in Python. And a lot of it is kind of happening under the hood. And if you don't send the push notification from Flutterflow itself, it can be difficult to get deep links to work. What I want to point out here is that deep links actually have just a very specific format that you need to adhere to. And I had to dig into the Flutterflow code myself to figure out what this was. What I do is I create this notification object in Python and initial page name is the name of the page in your Flutterflow project that you want the deep link to go to. Then you pass in an object called parameter data. So if you want to have parameters that, for example, have a database index that leads to a page with a particular piece of data in it, you do that here. You name it parameter data, and then you provide a key value pair for the name of the parameter and the value of the parameter. And that way, when the user taps the push notification, it will go to the correct page rather than just going to the home screen. Now, I also go further than this. I want to have a record of all of the notifications that have been sent to each of my users. In this case, what I'm doing is in Superbase, I'm creating a notifications table. And when I send a notification to a particular group or to all of the users, it creates a record for each one of these. And I have a notification JSON field. And so this is where I keep the image URL, the body, and even the deep link page and the destination ID for the page that I want that user to arrive at when they tap the notification. This approach can be inefficient for really large code bases because it leads to duplication and there are other methods of doing this that I won't go into. But for this app, it's a pretty small app and this is the simplest way to do it. The real advantage here is that each user gets its own is read column. And that allows me to create a list of notification history for the user in the app itself. So I have this little orange dot for unread notifications. When the user taps it, it will send a call to Superbase, mark the thing as read. And I also have this delete button where they can remove the notification as well. These lists of notification histories are very common in most apps. And it's not really something that's talked about a lot in the Flutterflow community, or at least that's what it seems to me. The other thing that you can do is you can count the number of notifications that are unread, and you can add this to a badge in your home screen. Hopefully this video has equipped you with enough knowledge to get your push notifications working in Flutterflow. And you might have noticed that I've actually combined Firebase with Superbase in some of the examples. So if you're interested in learning more about that concept, take a look at this video next as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.